What's up guys? Welcome to week 7, day 3 of Armor of God. This week, we are focusing on Helmet of Salvation. And for the past week, we've learned how important it is to have our head or our mind protected during a battle. And today, I just would like to share part of my testimony to you guys. I accepted Jesus Christ when I was 8 years old. And ever since that day, I just devoted myself to God and the ministry. But I grew up joining pageants and talent shows. And at a very young age, I started singing, dancing, and acting. And because of that, I had a dream of becoming a celebrity. And being a celebrity in the Philippines is a big thing. And you will earn lots of money. And with that, I was like thinking, I need to be a celebrity so that I can earn money and I can support my family. When I was six years old, I became a contestant for a big television show in the Philippines and I got a taste of being a celebrity and I can still remember how people will recognize me everywhere I go and I get special treatment. I got favor from people because of that. When I got a little older, I started auditioning for TV commercials, TV shows, and I even auditioned for Big Brother. If you don't know what Big Brother is, it's actually a reality show where I have to stay at a house with other people, strangers. The first time I auditioned, I failed. But I kept on chasing my dreams. I told myself, no, I need to be a celebrity. I want to be an actress. I want to be an actress and everyone knows that. So I kept auditioning, but I kept being rejected. With all of the rejections that I got, I started wearing a mask. I learned how to just pretend. Pretend that I'm happy even though I'm not. Pretend that I am okay even and I'm not. I started questioning my looks. I told myself that I am not beautiful enough. I am not good enough. That's why I got rejected a lot of times. During my high school days, the girls never liked me. They don't want to be friends with me. And I thought that maybe because I'm not cool enough and I'm not beautiful enough, that's why they don't want to be friends with me. So I started hanging out with guys. And because I hang out with guys, most of the time, I started dressing up as a guy. I'm always wearing shirts and jeans and Converse. And then I just hate wearing a dress. And I can also remember that all of my classmates are in a relationship and I'm the only one who's not in a relationship. And I told myself again that, oh, it's because I'm ugly. No one's interested in me and i'm not pretty enough so yeah and then i went to college and finally a guy noticed me but then he ended up breaking my heart so i was heartbroken and then another guy came and i actually thought he was the one until i left the philippines and went to dubai and the worst part of that is that he actually had something going on with my best friend my best friend. When I found out, I just cried and cried because I felt so betrayed and I trusted them. So from then on, I started hating him. I started hating my friends. I started hating everyone in our church in the Philippines because they know what happened. So I just hated them and then i got here in cayman and i told myself that this is a new beginning i'm gonna forget about the past and then i found friends but that's what i thought because of that i started questioning myself maybe there's something wrong with me that's why people tend to hate me people tend to just leave me and there's this guy who i thought who knew me so well and someone who can understand me someone who's always there for me and i just felt so loved and special that time 
that I fell for this person. We got in a relationship and it's a wrong relationship, a messed up relationship. And it was a secret. God kept on telling me to stop because it's not pleasing Him. It's not pleasing God. And the worst part is that I became a hypocrite. I lied to my leaders. I lied to my parents, to my family. I even lied to myself and tried to lie to God. I didn't listen to God when He is telling me to stop. And I kept continuing what I thought was right for me. So He exposed it. And there I found myself at the bottom. I found myself on the ground broken and just when I thought that I'm already experiencing the worst thing that I could ever experience. I got arrested for something that I didn't do. That time, I just crashed and felt so abandoned by God. And I actually almost cursed Him. I just said, why, God, why? Why is this happening to me? And at that time, I wish that I was just dead. I told God, just take my life. Just take me. I don't want to live anymore. Because all of the embarrassment, all of the rejections, all of the condemnations that I am experiencing right now, just take me. Just take my life. I don't want to live anymore. And then I kept chasing God during that time. I tried my best, but I can't. I couldn't hear Him. I felt like I lost Him. I felt like I lost God. But then, one night when I was just crying, He just told me that, stop condemning yourself. I'm not condemning you. You are precious to me. You are loved. You just felt that I left you, but I've never left your side. I've always been there. I realized, wow, when after all of the things that I did, after I even cursed you and just blamed you for everything, you still loved me. And so I ran to my father. I ran to God. And he welcomed me with his arms wide open and told me that I am love, I am precious, I am fearfully and wonderfully created by him, and that he will never leave me nor forsake me. And from then on, the promise of God sank in my heart. And so now I am here testifying to the goodness of God, the grace of God and how He loves each and every one of us. Let us pray. Lord, we thank You for Your grace and Your mercy. We thank You that even though we fail and run from You, You will always chase us with Your love and that You will always welcome us with Your arms wide open. Lord, I'm praying for those who are struggling right now to find their identity. Fill their hearts with Your love, Your peace, and Your joy and that they will know who they are in you, how you see them, that they will know that they are loved, that they are precious, and that they are fearfully and wonderfully created by you. Lord, I just entrust their lives to you. Protect them. In Jesus' name this we pray, amen. With your head protected, it is also important to know your identity. Christ. So remember, you are loved, you are beautiful, and there is no condemnation in Christ.